In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove paint off your classic car or truck. Then we'll talk about the necessary prep work that's involved before paint. And then I'll show you the proper way to paint bare metal. All right, first things first, I'm in my Sunday clothes. All right, let's get straight to it. So you might be asking yourself the question, why is this dude deciding to reprime his truck when it's already in primer? And that is because of stuff like this. This is because self-etching primer is porous and over time it will start rotting through. More on that later. So you're at that point, you maybe even bought yourself some sandpaper. Where do you start? Where do you go from here? And how you do it properly without warping the panels with too much heat. So there's two ways to do this, chemically or mechanically. So the clear winner here is the stripping disc. Just remember that this does get hot. So you wanna kinda jump around so you don't end up warping the metal. Well, it's definitely been a busy night. Got a lot of this stuff knocked out. I coated this panel last night with a smart strip that I got off Amazon. And I bought it for the reason just to kind of see what it would do. I'm used to the airplane strippers that are super nasty. And if you've ever used an airplane stripper, you know the smell. So I have to say, I'm impressed. The only downside of this product that it does take a while for it to work, it says three to 24 hours, but for not having to deal with the noxious fumes of an airplane stripper, this is pretty cool. And by the way, whenever you're working with strippers, make sure you have a lot of steel on hand. It really helps get some of this stuff off. I mean, that's bare metal down there. So here's what it looks like after a little bit of scrubbing with the steel wool. As far as the sandpaper discs go, I would not use them on something like this because you're basically down to bare metal and these are pretty abrasive. Now, if you had like seven layers of paint on the truck or the car, then yeah, you could use that to knock off a, probably a couple layers of it. This little cookie, this Rolock disc, is perfect in situations like this. So is a wire wheel. And a lot of these attachments that I'm using on these angle grinders will fit in a regular drill. For really tight spaces, they also sell these. So I'm sure as you're starting to see, there's a tool for kind of every job. Here is a more traditional stripper. Smells bad, will remove your skin, but the biggest thing why this is in a way better, it takes 15 minutes compared to 24 hours. All right, moment of truth, it's been about 20 minutes. I also have this stripping disc on a angle grinder. Now, this thing does spin pretty fast, so I wouldn't recommend it for large panels like a roof. Uh, but for stuff like this, see that is pretty hot still. If you concentrate it in one spot, especially on a large panel like this, you are going to probably pop can the metal. My tool of choice is the DA. One question you might be asking yourself is, do I always have to bring it down to bare metal? If it's on something newer, Let's say like this Trans Am here. Uh, the clear coat's coming off of this thing, so we know the clear coat's bad. And there is actually some primer showing through. On this car, I would not take it down to bare plastic, <laughs> whatever that car's made of. Now on a 49-year-old car that you really don't know what to expect underneath the paint, because it's already been repainted or it's been stripped down, and that's kind of where we were. Somebody stripped this thing at one point, and coated it with self-etching primer. Nothing wrong with that. I've done it with a couple cars, but it's a product that needs to be top coated fairly soon. I got the truck all sanded. The final grit was 80. But there's one thing that we have to do before we start painting this thing, actually a couple, is these questionable areas right here, all that rust. The, really the only way to clean this up besides using a chemical or an acid would be to media blast that. Don't really have a media blaster besides the cabinet and obviously the truck's not gonna fit in there. We're gonna take our spray bottle and we're gonna spray a little bit on this area. We'll take this pad, clean it all off. Now the worst part 
is we're supposed to keep this wet for the next half hour. I don't know how that's going to be possible, but okay. So I was actually able to stretch the little fast touch that I had, and I got the roof soaking right now, and I got the pillars and once that's done then i'm gonna do this back section all righty so it's about a week later and i was not able to paint it last weekend because of this no that's not crest or colgate that is the sediment left over from the fast hatch now i've only used fast hatch a couple times and never on a panel this big and i've never really ran into this issue before so i kind of left it alone i called east with the next day and uh, trevor told me that this is basically uh, the sediment or the salts left over from the phosphoric acid. So there's two ways to remove them. Either you can dump a 55 gallon drum of acetone on here and just keep cleaning it, or you can sand it back down. Yeah, this is another thing that I did last night. I tried to clean up this channel as much as I could. So really all I have left is just this section right here. And I did actually buy a small little sandblaster, which you guys will see in action. Wow, talk about tedious. You should see how many different tools I used to get this area. Okay, so all these channels at this point are about 98%, but there's still areas like this that I'm not gonna be able to get to, and areas like this that are gonna be impossible to get to. So I stopped at Eastwood in Elsip and picked up a couple things to make my life a little bit easier, and uh, you know, who doesn't like new toys? So here's the Speed Blaster, some gloves, the hood, and some 80 grit glass bead. This isn't ideal for doing an entire truck, but I used this yesterday and it does a pretty good job. So I'm gonna take that sandblaster, I'm gonna go around the entire area that I sanded and blast areas like this. Now this has already been treated with fast etch, but honestly, I'm just gonna take the blaster to it and remove all that. Let's gear up. Well, I think I'll be able to reuse some of this media. That was a good idea. Make sure you clean your garage before painting. I think it's time to get that C10 in. So once you're at this point, you just drop down the paint booth and start spraying, right? <clears throat> Wrong. We have to first clean the metal with some kind of wax and grease remover or some kind of acetone based cleaner or acetone. Everything on this truck is going to be painted by one system, which is going to be Eastwood. I'm actually going to be painting it with a Eastwood Contours Pro gun, and I'm going to be using all their products, starting with this pre. Look at all that. So I think you get the point. Spray, wipe, one direction, flip it over, one direction, spray, repeat. We're finally at that point. Let's talk about the paint. So I told you some cons of using self-etching primer, and I wanted to give you some... Hey, bar! What's that, dude? Did you guys hear that? It's weird. All right, moving along. Okay, so some of the pros of using self-etching primer. Let's see. I mean, it's been the industry standard for decades now at collision shops because it's very easy to use. Uh, you don't need an activator for it. If you're a guy that's just working in his garage, you don't need a paint gun because they come in rattle cans. But there's obviously some... Bar, make sure you tell them about epoxy what? primer. From Double R Restoration? What, what are you doing here, dude? Why haven't you told them about epoxy primer? Yeah, I know, dude. I'm working on it. I was just telling them the benefits of using self-edging primer. Well, then, if you're not going to tell them, I'm just going to take over your channel and tell them no, myself. No, man, I don't think that's going to happen, dude. Whoa, dude. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about epoxy primer. Epoxy primer is an excellent choice to use on your restoration from the bare metal up. When using epoxy primer as your first product of use on bare metal, it has excellent corrosion resistance properties. It also stays open for a long period of time, meaning that you can recoat it usually up to seven days. You'll want to check the product data sheet on the epoxy that you're using. Now usually I'm still scuffing after two or three days just to be on the safe side. There's a lot of variables in that with temperature and humidity, so you kind of want to play it safe when it comes to up to the seven day mark. I just want to include that as a disclaimer. The next benefit of using epoxy, you can continue to do body work over top of the epoxy. Let's say that you've got your car in epoxy and you find maybe a small place that you missed and you want to add a little filler. You can do that over epoxy. Not only are you going to get that mechanical bond from where you sanded the metal, you're also going to get that chemical bond between the two products. 
and that's going to work really well for you. The next benefit of using epoxy primer, depending on how you mix it, most epoxy primers can be mixed as a sealer. Now a sealer is going to do a few different things for you. Number one, if you've got a car that you've done a lot of sanding, a lot of blocking, it's going to give you a uniform surface for your base coat. So if you're using a gray epoxy, you're going to have a uniform gray finish over top of your whole project for your base coat. It's going to protect any bare metal that you may have from sand throughs and it's going to promote adhesion for your base coat. Let's talk a little bit about some of the drawbacks. There's two that I can really think of. The first one being time, the cure time. Like I mentioned, it stays open for a little while, so time is one drawback. Usually in restoration work, time is our friend because we don't work on our projects every day. They may sit for a week or two. That's usually not an issue. The other drawback is most epoxy primers don't sand well. When you try to sand them, they just kind of roll up on the sandpaper or gum the paper. I'm using Southern Polyurethane's epoxy primer in this shop, and actually it sands quite nice. With all that said, I hope you found that useful, and I guess we better give Bart his channel back before he flips out. And stay out! What's up with that, dude? What a weird dude, right? No, but seriously, go check out his channel. Link in the description. Let's get to Peyton. Man, I love this paint booth. It is so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend building one. Hey, plan's right there. I'm gonna be using uh, Eastwood Epoxy. It's a one-to-one -one mix. I'm gonna go with about full cup for now. So 26 ounces, I believe. But first, you gotta really mix this stuff up. So either get a shaker or get one of those. I would say that's good. Well, hopefully that's all the paint we're gonna need. So I have one last thing to do to the metal before I put paint on it, and that is to take this tack cloth and go over the entire surface to pick up anything that might have been left over. Round two, check in my pattern. Happy with that. Give you guys a shot of the outside of the booth. So there's the uh, inlet side. Walk over here. And then here's the outlet side. <laughs> 